and a lot of players love spamming them. Maybe we'll see Theodosis go for them now. He has guard bulletins, as well as also having the tank hunter partisans. So he has a really good loadout for the penal playstyle. Yeah, it's an interesting one. It's kind of what we were talking about earlier, those those guard doctrines, kind of indicative that you can play Tier 1 and still have a pretty good chance of dealing with light vehicles. Um, again, like, loadout-wise for DevM, uh, and we'll just jump into game and have a quick commander discussion in a second. Get this set up. It's also a good map for the, the Jishkas. It's a great map for MGs in general, but... The Maximus can have a hard time because their arc is so narrow, and when the map is this open, it then gets really easy to flank the Maxims. So we have Theodosis wasting no time, going immediately for his Tier 1, the, the Penal Barracks. That's exactly, yeah, what we said it was going to be, and um, no Conscripts this time. Sometimes when we've seen the, the Tier 2 or the Tier 1, we see a Conscript in the build. He's going straight for the Penal Battalion. Uh, which leads me to believe he may be going straight into scout car after this, which would be fairly effective, uh, to be honest. Then DevM hasn't reached out for the MG. He's going to go, I think, multiple Grens, unless he goes Gren Sniper. Um, be interested to see what the second unit in his build is. Uh, I think that's really interesting, uh, especially as we were talking about this before. I, I was expecting him to reach out for an MG, but he's going to go Gren Sniper. Uh, and of course, Snipe is very, very efficient on this map. But what I'm really looking forward to is um, seeing all the invited players play on maps like this as well. You know those games we see Love Nest when we play on here? Oh, Scout Car. Absolutely, absolutely phenomenal gameplay. Yeah, th th these builds have become predictable now. I think we know what kind of game we're about to see at this point. Well, this could be very effective here for Theodosis because DevM is going for a sniper and currently only has one squad of Grens. So the M3 could take that sniper out very quickly. So I wonder if Theodosis would have gone for this M3 normally or if this is more a counter to DevM's strategy since he typically likes to rush out that sniper. If he kills that sniper early on, that could that could set DevM so far behind and, and really prevent him from recovering here, going straight through the middle of the map. That's where the sniper's going, I think, unless he's going up the right side for the munitions point. Maybe he wants to save it for the, the, the flamer clown car? I don't know, he seems to be a little bit indifferent about it. If he caps that mid-VP, I don't think the scout car's going to see it straight away, but and the, the, the grenadiers are with it, so I don't think it's going to become a massive issue um, at the start at all. Okay. I, I think Perhaps if DevM is paying attention right now, he probably would have heard the noise profile yeah. of the scout car through the fog of war there. So he probably knows what to expect at this point. I think he's putting the penals in the scout car. Yeah, wow. Another squad of the grins. interesting thing, though, I mean, I don't think actually... Oh, no, it's alright, it's alright. Taking a lot of damage, grins have to retreat. It gets the cut off, but not for very long. So the M3 should be pretty effective here, but we, we most will likely see a quick 2-2-2. It's a bit harder on this map to make use of the Tank Hunter Partisan spawns. The, the garrisons aren't in the key positions. I guess you can probably spawn from the Sniper's Nest. That'd be a great spot to spawn from. But on some maps like Kolodny and Feynmanville, the Tank Hunter spawns uh, are very, very powerful. So going for guards is probably going to be the safer choice for Theodosis here. Look at this build. Triple penal battalions in at the moment. It's going to be a very, very interesting one. Of course, they're very, very strong at the moment. I just don't know what they're going to be practically doing on a map as open like this. They're going to be getting picked off by the snipers. Long-range engagement, sometimes through negative cover. It's going to make it very, very difficult for the penal battalions. I certainly don't expect to see them upgraded with flamethrowers. Of course, that could happen. He'll want something in the clown car with a flamer. So he'll probably have one of the squads with a flamer in the clown car. But yeah, the Grind may be a little bit too aggressive here for Dev M. Could even lose a squad if he's if he's unlucky here. The penals I don't know if they're focusing it down or not, but yeah, he's yeah, focusing yeah. it down. The M3 not in a position to follow that one up. And the sniper's been doing a bit of damage here, or only on two kills though, but the penals, they do bleed a fair bit of manpower, so the sniper is actually a pretty good counter against them. 
There's a nice flank coming in by the scout car. Oh. It's going for the sniper. It's about to detect it, but it's probably going to take a Faust from the Grenadiers. Will he get out of the vehicle with the penal battalions after this Faust? He should do. Bit of a miss oh, micro there. To stay in there. Second Faust coming through. Munitions going to be available here as well. And the penals didn't, couldn't quite focus the, the G Grenadiers down in time. Let's see if he loses he it. He, he, he will lose it. Wow, right. negative cover especially. So trading the Grenz for the M3, it's probably worth it even despite the fuel. And the Pioneers may be next as well. I don't know, letting them he run away. Decide to go for it. Yeah. Interesting. I think he probably could have got the wipe there on the, on the Pioneers. Behind heavy cover. Yeah, I don't think that'll affect all the models, but you should be able to win this one. But the sniper in the back doing that, the, the, the manpower bleed there. And actually, look at the, the map here. Dev M doesn't have his fuel point. It was disconnected. It was, it was decapped by that, that scout car. Yeah, I thought it was an interesting decision. I would prefer to have seen the penal battalions all together, but instead he was capping with the penal battalions in the scout car, uh, whilst the engineers were were available to replace that squad in the scout car, and he, he could have done some some quick capping with those, and saved the penal battalions for a, for a better assault. Um, Rebuilding the scout car. Interesting decision. Oh, I don't like that. A, a lot of players build well, if they're going to build an M3, which is rare, even. I think most players wouldn't rebuild really it because they just don't want to delay their tech that much. But it's still against the sniper. There isn't a med. Oh, there is actually a med bunker now, so the M3 uh, isn't as powerful. It does really well when squads are low, able to pick off models from afar. Uh, I think it, it can work as long as it, it denies the fuel point here, because if the Adosis has one fuel, especially two fuels, and DevM does not, doesn't have any, then then he can even despite the fuel investment. He can just go for uh, a quick T70, and the 222 it shouldn't be too much further off. But again, he has the partisan spawn. He has the guards as an option. Hopefully, he doesn't go too deep with the M3 as the 222 spawns. I think this is an interesting one. We just see that tier two uh, has it finished or is it? No, it's just about to go up now for DevM. I think he's got a little more time to play with the scout card to be honest. Um, in, in fairness to him, it, he's actually getting good map control out of all of this, so he may get some kind of like fuel advantage that still allows him to climb to a, a tier three early. Yeah, I'd say so. Ooh. And he's a bit worried about this sniper as a great penal flank. Depending on which way they go, they could get something off that's Ooh. really good here. He is going round towards the strategic cutoff. I think the Grenz gave him a little bit of a distraction there. Getting up close now. M3 is nearby as well. He actually evacuates the. The penals doesn't want to go too deep. Maybe he's worried about a pack or, or just the M3, the scout car, two to two. But he goes back in, and this is where things get a little bit risky. Scout car is two to two. It, it's it's almost here, but reinforcing is Dev M, so we'll delay his two to two further. To Retreating two Grens through. This could be a wipe. He has the flamer on the penals. This is going to be a dead squad for sure. Negative cover approaching as well. Unless the Grens get a nice Faust off, but no, that, that MG in the front negative cover is a bad combination for the Grenadiers. Wow, well, really, just check out Theo using DevM's own aggression against him. And this is the kind of thing we expect DevM to be able to deal with just by default knowledge. Scout car is making things really difficult, actually. This is really nice use of the scout car this time. Nothing too risky. Uh, just keeping the Pioneers from doing anything. He's probably going to enjoy a nice VP. Uh, gain right now, of course, he's already lost a few to DevM. Already has the tier 3 built, does Theodos. He's going to have a T70 building just as the 2 to 2 emerges, so that's that's a really bad thing as, as a Wehrmacht player. If your opponent has a T70 on the way, just as your 2 to 2 spawns, so yeah, despite the, the M3 investment, the 30 fuel, the map control he gained from that has definitely paid off here. He will lose this M3 though, Penal's going to be there, but they can't do much. And at this rate, he doesn't even need to spawn in some guards or tank hunters. He already has his T70 on the way, so it's not necessary anymore. I mean, look how much of the map DevM is managing to get back. And they're not even blobbed engagements either. You know, he's fighting one-on-one -on -one engagements just very, very well, very strategical. May lose a squad of Grenadiers here, though. It's a late retreat there. Penal battalions are giving chase. They don't get the same accuracy though when they're running as when they're standing still, so may not kill the squad. Looks like he's sending engineers through, but I don't think he'll manage to get it out in time. As a mine there, 
make it the 2-2-2 two, 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 if, if it paths over it. I think maybe DevM has tried to spread out too much. Because the Grenadiers won't win the one-on-one -on -one engagement against the Penals. Whereas if you have them blobbed up together, especially with the, the Sniper for support, then you can do some, some nice manpower build on the Penals. You can try and get those long-range engagements where you, where you kind of just have the critical mass to force retreats. But now that T70 has arrived and does call in the guards as well, just for the, the extra anti-tank and for the extra long-range damage. And DevM, he's still not going to have access to his second fuel. It has been decapped by the, the penals. And the sniper on the left side, got to be careful about the T70 collapsing upon him. There's no pack just yet. Devon does have the resources for a, a squad of Shreks on the Pegrins, which we have seen him elect for b before in the in previous games. It, it's always really risky though against T70s, but no, actually he goes for a Puma. So I think that's pretty clever. Doesn't quite land the Faust. It was going to be a close one, but having the guards there is going to be great against the, the Puma, especially with the button. So I like that. Going for the Grenz with the T70 and the guards as well. Has the DPs already for the extra damage. Grenz, they will survive this one though. He buttons the Puma. A little bit worried about the Puma chasing down the T70. And he actually retreated his guards, so the button cancelled. And that Puma, yeah. man, he's going deep. There's nothing else well, in the base. I think he realises there's no conscripts for the 18 aids. He's probably going to be able to get a lot of work done uh. against uh, the uh, against the penal battalions. I think that's one of the good things about going for the Puma as well. It's not wholly bad against uh, infantry. It can get a, a couple of kills. So it is a good unit in that respect. Theodosis is going to try and counter it with the SU-76. Of course, I'm hoping he does climb up to Tier 4 uh, eventually just to make use of the T-3485s. When you're versing squads that don't have any snares, such as penals, you can use the Puma very aggressively to shove squads out of cover. You just drive up to them, make them move around. They're not going to be firing at the Grens. They're going to be losing their cover. And the closer you are, the better accuracy you'll have with a Puma. So it can do quite effectively. Quite can quite can quite oh god damn it can be quite effective. <laughs> Man, I tried. Do I get the participation award for for shoutcasting? You do. Thank you for joining. Excellent. <laughs> it can be quite effective uh, against infantry if it's up close and able to use that uh, machine gun. But it's rare that you see it because most squads in KOTU have snares. SU-76. It is vulnerable to getting flanked by the Puma, but the guards are there for the button. So it's nice synergy there of the, the guards with their button. range on that SU-76. Great long distance shot there. Spotted by the T-70. This could be a very, very fearsome combination, especially with the guards there. First shot from the SU-76 hits. Button goes down on the guards. This is going to make things very, Ooh. very difficult. Beautiful deflection there from that static truck. <laughs> and lovely use of the smoke. Mangun destroyed Mangun from the destroyed. penals. The penals got that with their rifles. That's one thing I forgot about is the Panzer Tactician negates Button. It just removes it entirely, so it's, it's a pretty strong counter to yeah. that. Then you're trading munitions for munitions. It's, I think it's cheaper for the, the smoke, though. It's, it's, what, 30 munitions here for the Panzer Tactician, where the button is 40. So you actually lose out buttoning. But if you have the munitions lead, which, which Theodosis does, at least in terms of income, DevM having a bit of a float, but doesn't have any LMGs unlocked, so... He will be suffering in those infantry fights even more because he doesn't have the LMGs, which he needs against those guards in particular. Could be another squad of Grens going down. Oh, there's penals on the flank as well. Wow. Yeah. Great play there. Really great play. Uh, the, the actual use of um, cutting off retreat paths has been really, really good in this game. Theodosis, you know, at first using it with the scout car, uh, then the way he's predicting it and running in with a, with a second squad is really, really good. And it's the kind of thing that even DevM isn't really expecting it. He's not really expecting Theodosis to be this aggressive, especially not after their first game together. But uh, this is going to be really, really interesting. Uh, you know, with the double SU-76, uh, the infantry engagements are really going in the favor of Theodosis at the moment. I'm wondering how DevM is going to get out of this with the current commander he's got as well. You're on edge right now. Yeah, not looking good. He's also 
quite far behind in VPs. I can't remember the exact score in game number one, but it looks as though Theodosis will have faction selection. Moving on into game number three. The T70 gonna get hit by a Faust. The Puma's there in position for the follow-up. The T70 will go down by the looks of it. And there's actually a SU-76 in position as well. The Puma, is he backing away? No, he pops the smoke. He wants to finish this T70 off. And he misses. And the SU-76 from the north as well. He could lose the Puma. Going in for it, he oh. loses the Puma without getting that T70. It was an unintentional bait, but it worked out very well for him. Great follow-up there by Theodosis, having the, both the tank destroyers where they needed to be. I mean, that was a really, really good engagement there for Theodosis. I don't think we were really expecting uh, that to happen at all. Devim isn't really left with much at the moment, but I think he's still going to give it a go. Down to 300 VPs, and I didn't actually keep track of what the VP score was in the first game, uh, but... I think it might mean there's a chance on 467 VPs, it might be a chance that Theodosis gets a faction selection for game three if he keeps up this, this epic play. Pretty sure it will be Theodosis who will no doubtedly go for the Soviets. Demo in the middle here, could get the Grins. Should get the wiper that far. Oh. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Man, that's, that's, that's crushing. So with the T7, <laughs> it's a very small target size. So when the Puma is moving, and firing at something that's that small, you're going to miss that pretty frequently. M most tanks will miss a T-70 quite often while they're moving. And this double barrage as well here from the SU-76 will force the MG, but he's barraged both corners of, of the VP. What? <laughs> what? Wow! So many shots there hit! That was beautiful. I like how DevM dodged the SU-76 barrage into the other SU-76 barrage. It, it was a clever play there by Theodosis. It's very easy to dodge that ability, but if you do it twice in, in two corners of the VP, then you're left with nowhere to dodge. So DevM really hanging on for dear life here, going for a second sniper, and Theodosis going for a second T-70. Doesn't need I, tier I, 4. I think that's a great idea, to be honest, to keep on the light vehicles. I mean, the only thing he's coming up against, if he's constantly killing the Pumas, uh, you know, he really doesn't have that much to worry about when he's got this many light vehicles. He should always be winning those engagements, really. Sniper goes uh, down to the very, Penals. Very penals and a T-70 were hunting him down, and the pack will go down here as well. He gets suppressed by the base MGs? No, it was an MG-42 in the base. However, now it's got a Penals. He can actually Ura this. Ura for the kill, maybe. But negative cover should be enough, even despite the moving accuracy of the penals. No, no, <laughs> pack survives. Oh, <laughs> great shot from the SU7. I mean, the rate, sorry, the range of that has been really good. It's always firing in from off screen. Um, that's one of the great things about having the SU76. Oh, Look DG. at that, Devim surrenders. And that's pretty much gonna give. Game three to Theodosis. Let's have a look at this next game. I think that game just came down to Dev M rushing out the sniper and Theodosis preemptively rushing out the M3. It's it's a counter that build. The sniper it's such an investment, it's three hundred and sixty manpower, it takes a long time to build, it delays your capping power, and it, you you go for the sniper to get a, a very manpower bleed heavy game but it doesn't always translate well into territory. And that's what happened there is the M3s were able to, to push off Dev M with conjunction with, with the penals, and the T70 just came out too quickly. So, yeah, that was rough. Especially there was some so many great flanks there from Theodosis where he kept catching the squads out of position on retreat on the left side of the map. I think if that happens again, I'd like to see Dev M group up a bit more and... Stop sending individual squads against penals and the M3.